Now here it is, doing my first test pull. Got it out on the highway and uh, and ran it at 55 or 60. This little this little trailer pulls great. Everyone says bad things about Harbor Freight tools um, and products, but this trailer has been nothing but awesome. I now have about 10,000 miles pulling this little camper around. It pulls great. And, and I built this entire thing with all Harbor Freight tools except for the jigsaw that I borrowed from my father. Here it is hooked up. You can see super tiny little thing. All right, this isn't a very good picture, but on the inside, uh, instead of trying to put paneling on the inside, once I had had my styrofoam insulation um, all the way uh, around in it, um, I used, used a good quality speaker box uh, like people used to make sub boxes out of. I ordered it off of Amazon. Uh, it came in four foot rolls and it came with 3M 777 um, um, spray glue. See if I have some more shots. Here we go. This is a little bit better. So this is what I did the interior with. I'm very glad I did this because I can use Velcro and Velcro things on the inside of this, but it also has a great sound reducing quality and insulation quality. Now around my windows, my windows did not come with the trim pieces, okay? So I had to go another way with getting my windows installed. I had to cut out um, my, um, my, oh, the carpet, the boombox carpet, um, the acoustic carpet, and then I had to tuck it in, and then I went through with a black caulk all the way around the windows. I had a mind pause there. Don't ask me with cats walking through the house hollering at me. So, um, And in the corners, as you can see, there is a little bit of, uh, of some of my insulation stuff showing through. In the corners, I did the same thing, the black caulk, um, and I was just very careful with it, and that sealed up the edges. We should have some more pictures of that. Yeah, okay. Ceiling as well, um, I did I did in the same thing. It's two years old now, still going strong, still works well. It looks like a very professional quality install. I was very proud of this once I got everything in. I am a triple amputee. I am not going to get out in the middle of the night and put my legs on to go to the bathroom. This is a three gallon bucket with a, a toilet seat lid on it and I, and I had some spare carpet left. This sits in the corner of the camper. This is for emergency use. Um, so I don't have to try and throw my legs on and go find a place to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night if I'm camping. Just some more shots of the of the of the finished um, walls on the inside. I just did the floor in this as well. Just covered up my subfloor with a carpet. Here you can see that black caulk line I was talking about. I was able to put up uh, curtains on the inside. I put up. Um, a couple of shelves on the inside. You can see it right here. This is nothing but a uh, but a uh, uh, one by twelve or maybe one by ten, and I just covered it with carpet and then uh, and then skirted in with shelf brackets. These are no longer there. They were a bad idea. I tried them out. Um, didn't like it. This is the front wall of the camper. This is uh, this. Uh, was a, a basic unit that I bought because I had to have my camper going. I had to have power in it. So I bought a, a cheap uh, little plug-in unit for my 12 volt. I now have that changed to something different. This is the back wall of the camper. So that's the galley wall right there. Put my battery up front. I have a water tank on, on this thing now as well. So there's storage up front. And this is basically my camper pretty much done right here. I still have some galley work to do. Let me go through some of the pictures. It's my original wiring setup. I've changed it a little bit differently now. I have a fuse box, atta fuse box attached to it now also. This is a Melamime shelf board. Uh, was a great idea at the time. I think now um, if I built a new one, I would just put a piece of plywood in and I would paint it with, um, with countertop paint. Um, but I just, I got a basic bar sink, um, 
and this melamine board I just dropped right in. It's 18 inches wide, so it was already cut the size I needed. I just had to trim about an inch off of one side. Plumbing is, is basic plumbing. Uh, if you don't have plumbing skills, look it up. Plumbing is pretty easy to do. There's my drain that goes out. Here's, here is my, my drain set up at the back side of the camper. This is the back roadside, uh, driver's side, if you will. Um, I have a, a screw-in piece that goes with this and a, and a hose that runs way out. So I can, either, I can either drain into a tank or I can drain out onto the ground. Here's my better setup for my, um, for my DC on the inside. I finally got to replace that. Again, I got rid of that. Didn't like it. Curtains, handmade curtains by my mother. So this is all pretty basic stuff. Um, everything in this thing is run, run um, off of 12 volt, except for a few things that are run off of, off of this power inverter right here. Uh, instead of trying to build in shelves, these are, are uh, cabinet shelves um, that I got at Lowe's, or maybe I ordered them online. Um, but, that, but there's lots of storage space right there. They hold full-size canned goods. Lots of storage space, and I didn't have to build any shelving, so it was a lot cheaper and a lot easier for me to do. Make sure that you have a fire extinguisher inside the camper. And we'll go back to this other picture, and I have a fire extinguisher in my galley as well. Here's a camper behind my car. I, I ended up going from, a, uh, from my S10 truck to a car. I, I pulled this camper for nearly two years with this little car with a four-cylinder in it, and it did just fine. So the whole camper weighs about 800 pounds. Here's my water tank that... Uh, um, that I ended up putting on. Um, so it's an outside water tank. It's not inside the camper. It just sits right there. And I've got a water line that, and it's got a, it's got a built in water pump. Um, if you look at some of my other videos, you'll see, I did a video on my water system. So you can take a look at that. I have a railing system that I put on, put on, I think they call this J channel. I'm not sure. Um, but I put this on the side so I could have a table. There's me building a table just out of some of my leftover cutouts. So I have a table on the side. These are all just some ideas for you if you want to build one. Um, I, I love this thing. I camp in it all the time. I ended up building a cabinet for the inside, and I've gone through several several iterations with this camper. Now it's finally done, but I have a... Um, 16, 18 inch, maybe, uh, across TV. This is a 12 volt TV. I got it on Amazon, Amazon for about a hundred bucks. It does not, it doesn't need a power converter. It runs off a of straight 12 volt. Okay. So here's the, here's the, uh, um, cabinet all done. I cut it down several times. As you can see, there's my little emergency bucket. Um, so this is what the camper looks like now um, on the inside. So this is all done. So there's lots of cabinet space in here. Um, inside where I'm sitting, now, you can see my reflection. I'm sitting up against the wall, uh, the front wall. This is a four foot by 72 inch um, space on the floor uh, of this camper. And so that's basically a, a double bed. Um, and it sleeps two people comfortably in this double bed. I know because our last trip to Florida, we thought a bear was running around outside and my son got freaked out and jumped in the camper with me. And we both slept in here, no problem. You think four foot's not very wide, but when you have the, uh, the walls that you can lean up against or get right next against and not fall out of the bed, you've got lots of space. All right, so we're through with this. This is my camper build. Please leave comments if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to, uh, um, to, me to message me or leave them in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks, guys, and I have new videos coming out soon.